Dead America, Tales from New York, Homeless, by Derek Slayton. Chapter 1, Day 0, 11, 13 p.m. The icy gusts whipped against Clay and Vivian's faces as they emerged from the upscale restaurant near Central Park. Despite the chill, they wore the glow of young love, having been an item for half a year since crossing paths in a fitness class. Maybe we should duck back in for a nightcap, warm ourselves up before walking home, Clay suggested. I don't think alcohol works like that, Vivian replied with a chuckle. Sure, if you only consider the science of it, Clay countered. And what other way is there? Vivian challenged. Well, for instance, Clay began with a grin, if you pump enough drinks into me, it lowers my inhibitions, which will most definitely lead to you warming up. Vivian couldn't help but laugh, giving Clay a playful tap on the chest. You do realize who you're talking to, right? Can you honestly remember a single moment in the last six months when you've held back? Clay pondered for a moment. Well, that's a tough one. Perhaps one more drink would jog my memory. Vivian laughed again, gently tugging Clay towards the park. You know I'd love to, but I have a busy day at the office tomorrow. And besides, I've already have enough to overcome my inhibitions, and I'd much rather devote my time to that. Clay flashed a smirk and winked playfully at her before nodding in agreement. I like the way you think. Come on, let's take a stroll through the park on our way back, he suggested. Vivian gladly linked her arm with Clay's as they made their way across the street toward the park. My handsome man escorting me through the park. How romantic, Vivian remarked with a smile. Just wait until I get you home, Clay teased in response. Vivian giggled as they reached the edge of the park, where the moon hung high in the sky, casting a soft glow that complemented the streetlights along the main path. As they walked, they observed the remaining few people still out and about. A couple of runners seizing the night for exercise, a few individuals in business attire with the telltale sign of questioning their life choices etched on their faces, and a pair of homeless individuals relaxing on the benches. So, I have something to discuss with you, Vivian began. Oh no, Clay responded with a hint of playful apprehension. What's with the oh no? Vivian questioned, raising an eyebrow. Nothing good typically follows that introduction, Clay explained. Wow, I didn't realize I was dating such a pessimist, Vivian joked. Hey now, I'm an optimist, Clay countered with a grin. Really? Vivian challenged. Yeah, I'm optimistic that you're going to prove me wrong, Clay quipped, his tone light and teasing. Vivian chuckled nervously, her gaze shifting downward, a hint of self-consciousness evident in her demeanor as she broached her request. So the holidays are going to be here before we know it. She began tentatively, and I was wondering if you wanted to come home with me to meet the parents. Clay didn't respond immediately, his steps halting in the middle of the pathway. Vivian's concern grew, prompting her to lift her head to meet his gaze directly. Or not. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to rush things, she offered apologetically. No, it's not that, Clay reassured her. I'd love to meet your parents. It's just, look over there. Vivian followed Clay's gaze down the path about 40 yards ahead, where a homeless man seated on a bench was engaged in a heated exchange with a well-dressed individual. The homeless man appeared defensive, his hands raised, while the suited man berated him. Though they were too far to hear the words exchanged, the tension in the air was palpable. The suited man's agitation was evident, and without warning, he delivered a brutal punch to the homeless man's head. Clay and Vivian watched in shock as the altercation escalated. The homeless man attempted to placate his aggressor, reaching out in a futile attempt to calm the situation. In response, the suited man unleashed a flurry of blows. Without hesitation, Clay sprinted towards the scene, with Vivian trailing closely behind. As he approached, he witnessed the businessman delivering several vicious punches, while the homeless man struggled to defend himself. Clay acted swiftly, delivering a powerful blow to the businessman's back, sending him sprawling to the ground. Standing tall over the fallen aggressor, Clay glanced back to Vivian, 
who had rushed to the aid of the homeless man before turning towards the attacker. All right, buddy, you've had enough tonight. Go sleep it off. Clay said firmly, his voice carrying authority as he addressed the businessman. The businessman scrambled to his feet. A pained expression etched across his face as he reached down to his forearm. Clay's gaze lingered on the injured limb, noticing the torn fabric and the gaping wound where a chunk of flesh had been ripped away. Clay tried to adopt a sympathetic stance, though he remained cautious, wary of the wild look still present in the businessman's eyes. Just keep those people away from me, the businessman pleaded. If you don't want homeless people around you, then you may want to consider moving to a different city, Clay suggested, his tone firm. One of them did this to me. The businessman exclaimed, lifting his arm to display the injury. The asshole bit right into me and tore out a chunk. Clay stood his ground. Well, this guy didn't, so keep moving or deal with me. With muttered curses, the businessman stalked off, leaving Clay to turn his attention to the homeless man, who appeared shaken. Hey, are you okay, buddy? Clay inquired. Yeah, not the craziest son of a bitch I've dealt with this week, Moses replied with a wry grin. Moses looked up at Clay with a worn smile, his late forties bearing the unmistakable marks of years spent on the streets. Several teeth were missing from his weathered face, his grain beard scraggly and thinning, while patches of dirt adorned his multiple jackets, hinting at their long neglect. I'm Clay, and this is Vivian, Clay introduced. My name's Moses. It's a pleasure to meet you, Moses replied warmly. Are you sure you're okay, Moses? I can take a look at your head if you want, Vivian offered, concern evident in her voice. I've had quite a few people over the years check out my melon, Moses chuckled. If anything, those punches might have clicked on a few switches that have been off up there. His self-deprecating joke elicited laughter from Vivian and Clay, though their amusement stemmed more from relief than finding the situation humorous. Are you sure there isn't anything we can do for you? Vivian persisted. No, you young people have already spent enough of your time on this old fool tonight, Moses replied gratefully. I do appreciate your help though, son. I was comfortable, and you saved me from having to get up and give him the old one too. Moses began shadow boxing, his movements a mix of jest and genuine skill, leaving the couple unsure whether to take him seriously. It was my pleasure, Clay said with a grin. I deal with half a dozen guys like that every day, and they annoy the hell out of me. Felt good to knock one on his ass. Vivian reached into her pocket and retrieved a $20 bill, extending it to Clay. Here, take this. Oh, I couldn't, Moses protested. Please go get something to eat and warm yourself up. It's going to be cold tonight, Vivian insisted, her tone firm yet compassionate. After a brief moment of consideration, Moses accepted the bill, nodding appreciatively at the gesture. You two young folks are all right. Gives me hope for the future of this nation. You be safe out here, old-timer, Clay said, offering a nod of farewell. Have a good night, Vivian added, her voice filled with genuine concern. Clay nodded, and Vivian offered him a soft smile as they strolled away. Moses lingered on the bench for a moment, observing their departure before he heaved himself upright. His hand grazed his sore head where the punch had landed, eliciting a wince of discomfort. That sumbitch got me good, Moses muttered to himself, his tone a mix of irritation and amusement. Yeah, but he's lucky though. If I had gotten up, his ass would still be on the ground. With a chuckle, Moses indulged in a bit more shadow boxing before retrieving his canvas bag from beside the bench and setting off towards the row of stores on the opposite side of the park. The journey was brief, just a hundred yards or so before he reached the street. Stepping across, he entered a small bodega with a grill nestled at the back. The jingle of the doorbell announced his arrival, prompting an almost immediate outburst from the shop owner. Hell no, we're not doing this. You people have already caused problems tonight, and you're not doing it here, the owner exclaimed. Moses raised the $20 bill, catching the owner's attention. I ain't been in here in weeks, 
and I don't give a shit what anybody else has done because they ain't me. Now I got 20 bucks and want a hot sandwich and the biggest goddamn cup of coffee you got. Now, do you want the money or do you want me to go to your competitor on the next block? Then come up here and piss on your front window when I'm done with my coffee. The shop owner pondered for a moment before relenting, motioning for Moses to approach. Okay, I can make you something custom, or I got this order here that got canceled after I made it. There's three different sandwiches in there, all of them still hot. If you want, you can have that and a big-ass coffee for the 20 bucks, the shop owner offered. Moses grinned. Throw in a bag of chips and you got a deal. The shop owner nodded, and they swiftly completed their transaction. Moses secured his cup of coffee, transferring it into one of the oversized soft drink cups provided, and then bid the shop owner farewell with a nod as he exited the store. The cool evening air brushed against his face, but the warmth of the coffee enveloped him, offering a comforting contrast. With a satisfied sigh, he took a long draw from the cup, feeling the heat permeate his entire body. Oh, that's the stuff, Moses murmured appreciatively, relishing in the warmth and the simple pleasure of a hot beverage on a chilly night. Moses hurried across the street, making his way back to his seat in the park. However, before he could reach it, the faint sounds of screaming pierced the air. It was a woman's voice, desperate and pleading for help. Without hesitation, Moses downed a quarter of his coffee in a single gulp, refusing to waste a drop, before he took off running. His canvas bag swung back and forth, but his stride remained steady and determined. As he sprinted, the screams grew louder, the urgency in the woman's voice driving Moses forward. Rounding the corner of the path, he spotted Clay on the ground, engaged in a struggle with another man. Vivian was trying to restrain the assailant, but they were both losing ground as the man fought ferociously. Moses recognized the attacker as another homeless man, Ricky. He paused for a moment, assessing the situation as Ricky attempted to bite Vivian's arms, forcing her to release her grip. Clay pushed against the man's chest, but their efforts seemed futile against Ricky's relentless assault. Without a second thought, Moses dropped his coffee and sandwiches, charging straight at Ricky. Lowering his shoulder, he slammed into Ricky's chest, sending him tumbling backward. Get away from them, Ricky, Moses bellowed, his voice commanding and resolute. Ricky rose to his feet, his vacant gaze fixed on Moses as he emitted a chilling moan. Without hesitation, he lunged towards Moses, who swiftly sidestepped and pushed him to the ground. Before Ricky could rise again, Moses reached into his pockets and retrieved two sets of brass knuckles, slipping them onto his hands. Don't make me do this, Ricky, Moses warned, his voice laced with urgency. Ignoring the warning, Ricky, no longer seeming human, emitted another frenzied shriek before charging at Moses once more. Moses stood firm, assuming a boxer's stance as Ricky closed in. With precision and force, Moses delivered a powerful punch to Ricky's face, snapping his head back. Yet, instead of recoiling, Ricky pressed forward, seizing Moses in a grip. In response, Moses unleashed a flurry of punches, striking Ricky repeatedly in the head. The blows seemed to disorient Ricky, his movements faltering as if he was losing control of his senses. Moses continued his assault, landing another barrage of blows until finally, with a vicious uppercut, he sent Ricky crashing to the ground. The sickening sound of Ricky's skull striking the pavement reverberated through the air, leaving an eerie silence in its wake. Moses stood poised, prepared to defend himself if Ricky attempted to rise again but Ricky remained motionless on the ground. All three of them stood there, enveloped in stunned silence, their gazes fixed on the fallen homeless man. None were certain of what had just happened. Chapter 2 The trio stood amidst the winding pathway, their gazes fixed upon Ricky's lifeless form. Vivian extended a helping hand to Clay, assisting him in rising from the ground. Together, they approached Moses, who appeared to be a blend of heightened adrenaline and mild bewilderment. Are you okay, Moses? Vivian inquired. Moses nodded slightly, taking a moment to compose himself before responding. What the hell happened to you, Ricky? He questioned, his voice tinged with disbelief. 
He didn't say a word to us, Vivian began, recounting the unsettling encounter. He was just walking around up the path there, and when he heard our footsteps, he turned and sprinted towards us. Next thing I know, I'm on my back, and he's trying to take a chunk out of me, Clay added, his tone still marked by shock. That makes no sense, Moses interjected. Maybe he took something that was laced with a hallucinogen? Vivian suggested. Nah, Ricky wouldn't touch that stuff, Moses refuted, shaking his head. He drank like a fish but steered clear of that. But that's not what's bothering me. What do you mean? Vivian inquired, her curiosity piqued. I mean, not two hours ago I saw Ricky in an alley across the way. Moses revealed. He hadn't been feeling too good the last couple of days. Went to check on him and he barely had the strength to sit up, let alone do what he just did here. Curiosity led Vivian to approach Ricky, kneeling down beside his motionless form. Be careful, Vivian, Clay warned, his tone edged with concern. I knocked his ass out good. He ain't getting back up, Moses declared confidently. That's for sure, Vivian affirmed, her attention focused on Ricky's head. She observed the pool of blood beneath his skull, then reached out to check for a pulse, her efforts proving futile. She shook her head in silent confirmation to the others, signaling her grim discovery. Look at his mouth, Clay urged, drawing Vivian's attention to the blood surrounding Ricky's lips. Following his direction, she retrieved an ink pen from her purse and used it to pry back his upper lip. Recoiling at the sight of flesh, hair, and fabric protruding from his teeth, she dropped her pen. He bit somebody, Vivian stated, her voice tinged with horror. As Vivian rose to rejoin the others, Clay and Moses exchanged a perplexed glance. Maybe he bit that businessman? Clay speculated. It could be, Vivian agreed, her thoughts mirroring Clay's confusion. What the hell is going on? Clay exclaimed. They observed Moses grappling with the emotional weight of his friend's lifeless body sprawled on the ground. Sensing his distress, Vivian swiftly approached offering solace with a comforting hand on his shoulder. I'm sorry for your loss, Moses. Truly, she expressed empathetically. He was a good man, just hit a rough patch like many of us do. But what he was doing to you folks wasn't right, so I did what I had to do, Moses responded, his voice tinged with a mix of grief and resolve. And we appreciate that, Moses, Vivian acknowledged. And when the police ask what happened, we're going to tell them you saved us. Clay chimed in. Vivian gestured towards the blood-stained brass knuckles. Although you might want to get rid of those, she advised gently. Yeah, pretty sure those are illegal. Aren't you afraid of getting arrested? Clay asked. Life on the street ain't easy. Best case, they help even the odds in a fight. Worst case, the police grab me and I spend a few months with three hots and a cot. Don't really see a downside there, Moses replied. Clay and Vivian exchanged a knowing glance, silently concurring with Moses' assessment. However, before they could delve deeper into their conversation, a chorus of screams pierced the air from further within the park, their urgency evident. What the hell is that? Clay exclaimed. The trio proceeded cautiously, veering off the path toward a cluster of trees that opened into a clearing. As they approached the edge, a horrifying tableau unfurled before their eyes. Three individuals were besieged by a horde of ten figures, each behaving with the same ferocity Ricky had exhibited moments ago. Helplessly, Vivian, Clay, and Moses bore witness as the victims were mercilessly tackled to the ground, their anguished cries echoing through the night as the assailants sank their teeth into flesh. Oh my God, Vivian gasped, her voice trembling with disbelief and horror. We need to find somewhere safe, and quickly, Clay urged. Come on, that bodega across the street. They've got those old school shutters on it. And it's still open, Moses suggested. Retreating hastily to the pathway, the trio found themselves confronted by one of the creatures, emitting a guttural moan as it lunged directly at Vivian. With swift reflexes, Clay yanked her backward, narrowly avoiding the zombie's grasp, while Moses stepped forward, his movements decisive. 
delivering a powerful blow straight to the bridge of the creature's nose. Moses sent it crashing to the ground. Without hesitation, he dropped to his knees atop the ghoul, delivering a series of decisive blows to its skull. Blood sprayed, painting his face in crimson as the creature's skull fractured under the force of his assault. Satisfied that the threat was neutralized, Moses rose to his feet, casting a quick glance back at the couple. Don't worry, we've got your back on that one too, Clay assured him. Come on, Moses urged, his tone commanding as they made their way toward the bodega. The trio dashed out onto the street, finding it eerily silent, except for a few passing taxicabs that paid them no heed. With urgency, they hurried across the road toward the bodega, its shutters already drawn closed. Their fists pounded on the metal, voices rising in a chorus of desperation. Come on, man, I know you're still in there. I just bought sandwiches not 15 minutes ago, Moses implored, his frustration bubbling up. The shop owner's face emerged through a gap in the shutter, eyes narrowed with irritation. We're closed. Go somewhere else. He barked, his tone clipped. Moses persisted, gesturing to his companions. Come on, man. These people will buy some sandwiches, too. But the shop owner's response was stark, his arm revealing a gory wound. I said we're closed. The last person I let in here did this to me. Now I have to wait on the police. You better be gone when they get here. Moses sighed, his hope deflating. Well, so much for that idea, he muttered. Vivian's voice cut through the disappointment. The restaurant. Moses shook his head, eyeing her attire skeptically. Judging by the way you're dressed, I doubt they're going to let me in. They'll make an exception. Let's go. Clay said as he began moving them in that direction. The trio dashed along the sidewalk, the restaurant looming at the end of the block. As they drew closer, a waiter burst out, his pristine white shirt now drenched in crimson. The sight halted them in their tracks, their eyes widening in shock as they beheld the wounded man's frantic attempt to reach a car parked nearby. Before their horrified gaze, another waiter emerged, his own shirt shredded and soaked in blood. He collided with the fleeing man, and both collapsed to the ground in a tangled heap. The creature, grotesque and ravenous, began tearing into the young man's neck with savage ferocity. Blood sprayed, painting the nearby car in crimson hues. Before they could react, the creature's gaze locked onto them, and it emitted a guttural moan. Dropping its grisly meal, it lurched toward them with deadly intent. Moses surged forward, fists clenched in determination. Like a force of nature, he met the undead horror head-on, delivering swift and brutal blows. With two precise strikes, the creature's skull cracked open, and as it began to topple, Moses delivered a final, decisive blow, his brass knuckles sinking into its forehead, driving it into the unforgiving concrete. We need to find some place to hide, Vivian urged, her voice trembling, and I don't think the restaurant is going to work. The trio fell into an uneasy silence, the cacophony of chaos erupting from the restaurant assaulting their senses. Screams, shattering dishes, and the tumult of overturned tables echoed through the air. We could head for the apartment, Clay suggested. How far? Moses inquired, his voice tinged with apprehension. A few blocks on the other side of the park, Clay replied. Moses hesitated. After what we just witnessed, you want to go back through the park? I don't want to, but at this point, I don't want to be where people are. Clay admitted. Before their debate could continue, movement stirred near the car where the fallen waiter lay. Their attention snapped to the scene as the young man began to stir. What the hell? Vivian exclaimed, her voice tinged with disbelief. Get behind me. Moses said as he instinctively positioned himself protectively in front of his companions, anticipating danger. However, the reanimated figure, drawn by the commotion from the restaurant, rushed back inside, leaving them unharmed. I guess we weren't up to his standards, Moses remarked wryly, the tension easing slightly. Clay glanced at him, a hint of uncertainty in his expression. Do you want to try it? He asked cautiously. Vivian hesitated for a moment, 
her uncertainty palpable, before finally conceding with a nod. I don't know what other choice we have, she admitted. Moses, you're coming with us, right? Clay chimed in. Yeah, we're not leaving you behind in this mess, she affirmed. Moses acknowledged their solidarity with gratitude. I appreciate that. Despite the escalating chaos inside the restaurant, no one emerged from within. Come on, let's move, Clay urged, his voice tinged with urgency. The trio pivoted and retraced their steps toward the park, their nerves taut with anticipation of what awaited them. As they approached the pathway, they quickened their pace, moving stealthily, their senses attuned to any hint of danger. About a hundred yards ahead, faint moans emanated from the trees to their left. Moses gestured for them to veer right, taking cover behind a bench. Just as they reached it, two figures lurched out from the trees. One was a young man in a worker's uniform, the other a female jogger missing chunks of her legs. The zombies locked onto the trio, closing in with alarming speed. Moses swiftly passed a pair of brass knuckles to Clay. Hit them hard, he instructed. Clay swiftly donned the weapon as they observed the creatures barreling straight toward the bench, showing no sign of diverting their course. Upon collision with the metal, they stumbled awkwardly before regaining their balance. Both men lunged forward, delivering swift and forceful blows. It took only a few strikes to incapacitate the creatures, causing them to collapse over the bench, concealing it beneath their bodies. The trio remained vigilant, listening as more moans emanated from the same woods. Vivian instinctively pulled them into cover, using the corpses as a shield from view. Peering through the openings on the bench, they spotted half a dozen zombies emerging onto the pathway. The undead creatures scanned their surroundings, seeking potential prey. Fortunately, a car horn sounded nearby, drawing the attention of all six zombies. In unison, they sprinted toward the source of the noise, leaving the trio in temporary safety. They sat in tense silence until the ghouls were out of earshot, then conversed in hushed tones. There's no way we're going to make it to the apartment, Vivian voiced her concerns. We have to try Vivian, Clay insisted. But those things are everywhere, she countered. Which is why we need to stay away from people. Any place that's still open is going to have those things drawn to it, Clay said. Vivian bowed her head, conceding to Clay's logic with a heavy heart. We have to keep moving, Clay insisted, his determination unwavering. But Moses interjected, siding with Vivian's doubts. Vivian is right. There ain't no way we're making it to your apartment. We have to try, Clay reiterated, refusing to entertain the possibility of giving up. Moses contemplated for a moment before he suddenly seized Clay's arm, halting his movement. What is it? Clay inquired, curiosity piqued by Moses' sudden urgency. I have an idea. I know where we can go, Moses declared, a glimmer of hope igniting in his eyes. Chapter 3 The trio huddled close behind their makeshift cover, Clay and Vivian turning their gaze towards Moses, confusion etched in their expressions. So you know some place where we can go? Clay asked. Where? Vivian chimed in. Moses' reply was steady, his voice tinged with urgency. It's down in the subway tunnel. Their eyes met in silent communication, exchanging a glance fraught with concern. There's going to be a lot of people down there, Vivian voiced her apprehension. Not where we're going, Moses reassured them. There's a maintenance tunnel just down from the platform that goes to an unused area. Some friends and I took shelter there during the last big snowstorm we had. It's off the beaten path, and we can lock it up tight. Their options dwindling, Vivian and Clay exchanged another look, silently conceding to the plan. Okay, we're with you, Moses. Where do we go? Vivian acquiesced. We gotta get back out to the street and down a block to the left. The station entrance is right there, Moses directed. With synchronized nods, the young couple followed Moses as he rose, leading them out from the safety of their hiding spot. 
Their hurried footsteps echoed through the silent night air as they rushed back towards the street. Suddenly, a haunting moan pierced the stillness from behind them. Run, Moses urged. The trio quickened their pace, but their steps were soon met by the emergence of several creatures from the surrounding trees. Zombies, sluggish at first, soon pinpointed the source of the noise and surged forward in pursuit of the survivors. Moses took the lead, guiding them towards the street. Just as they reached it, Vivian's grip tightened on his arm, yanking him back, just in time to narrowly evade a taxi careening onto the sidewalk, its impact reverberating against a nearby lamppost. Their eyes darted to the cab's front seat, witnessing a struggle between the driver and an assailant in the back that had lunged forward and was latched onto the driver's neck. Come on, we have to move, Clay urged, propelling them forward. They sprinted towards the subway, but ahead, silhouettes darted around, indistinguishable in the dimness. Human or not, the distinction blurred in their urgency to advance. Moses forged ahead, his companions trailing closely behind, their focus fixated on the subway entrance ahead. Approaching an intersection, they spotted three zombies hurtling towards them on the sidewalk. Moses braced himself to charge through them, banking on sheer momentum to clear a path. But fate intervened. Just before they reached the roadway, a city bus barreled through, colliding with the undead and sending them sprawling. Clay and Vivian frantically gestured for the bus to halt, hoping for refuge. Yet, the driver remained oblivious, consumed by fear, along with the passengers aboard. Come on, it's just up ahead, Moses yelled. Moses dashed ahead, the couple close on his heels as they navigated the treacherous terrain of the street strewn with the broken forms of the undead. Vivian couldn't help but glance at one of the fallen creatures, its broken form still twitching with a desperate attempt to rise. Pushing the gruesome sight aside, they sprinted toward the subway entrance looming just ahead, a mere 20 yards away. However, just beyond the entrance were more zombies frenzied and searching for prey. Despite their nearness, the trio managed to slip into the stairwell unnoticed, darting into the subway. Inside, the chaos only intensified as they descended the stairs, the cacophony of moans and shuffling footsteps echoing from the platform below. To their left, an escalator beckoned, occupied by three creatures who turned their undead gaze towards the fleeing survivors. Realizing the imminent threat, Moses acted swiftly. With the zombies closing in, fueled by the escalator's upward movement, he leaped onto the flat surface adjacent to the stairs, sliding down with increasing speed. Just as he neared the first zombie, he reached out, grabbing hold of its shirt and yanking it backward with a forceful tug. The force of Moses' pull sent the creature tumbling, dragging its companions along as they crashed down the escalator, their bones snapping with sickening cracks all the way to the bottom. At the entrance to the platform, Moses landed with a firm thud, scanning his surroundings for any remaining threats. Finding none, he turned his attention back to the escalator, just as the creatures reached the floor, their bodies twisted and broken, tangled in a heap of thrashing limbs. Without hesitation, Moses launched into action, delivering a rapid barrage of punches to their heads, each blow shattering skulls with brutal efficiency. After a tense struggle, the creatures lay still, their movements stilled by the force of his assault. As Vivian and Clay joined him at the bottom of the stairs, Moses, still adrenaline fueled from the fight, greeted them with a sense of newfound vitality. Are you okay? Clay inquired, concern etched in his voice. Yeah, I feel more alive than I have in a long time, Moses replied, his breath coming in exhilarated gasps. Vivian surveyed their surroundings, her gaze flickering with determination. Where to now? We need to jump the turnstiles and make our way to the platform, Moses declared. The trio hurried towards the turnstiles, Moses and Vivian leaping over first. But as Clay vaulted over, a ghoul sprinted towards him closing the distance with alarming speed. With adrenaline coursing through him, Clay swung his brass knuckle-adorned fist blindly, landing a fortuitous blow to the creature's jaw. The bone snapped audibly, nearly dislodging the lower portion of its face, but the impact still sent Clay tumbling to the ground. Reacting swiftly, 
Moses rushed to Clay's aid, seizing the zombie by its shirt and pulling it off his friend. The creature thrashed violently in his grasp as Moses dragged it towards a nearby metal slotted fence. Moses shoved the creature's head into one of the slots before delivering a series of powerful blows to the back of its skull. Each strike reverberated with force, and soon the zombie ceased its struggles, its head now supporting its limp body, dangling from the fence like a marionette being held up by its strings. Clay rose to his feet, offering a nod of gratitude to Moses for his timely intervention. Come on, Moses urged, his voice firm with resolve. It's not much further now. The trio dashed towards the platform, the structure looming a mere 30 yards ahead. Yet their urgency was met with a disconcerting cacophony of moans and bangs emanating from the vicinity. Moses urged them to halt, his movements deliberate as he inched towards the corner leading to the main platform. Peering around, he grimaced at the scene unfolding before him. Fifteen grotesque figures swarmed around an office adjacent to the track, their collective agitation palpable. Some, at the rear, grew disinterested, looking around the platform for prey they could get to before the other ghouls. Speaking in hushed tones, Moses addressed his companions, wary of drawing unwanted attention from the undead. Okay, there's a whole mess of those things over there, and we have to get past them, he murmured. Clay and Vivian took turns surveying the grim tableau, their expressions mirroring Moses' dismay. How in the hell are we going to do that? Clay's voice carried a note of apprehension. Those things will be on us in an instant as soon as they know we're there. Well, we can't just stand here, Vivian retorted, her tone tinged with urgency. We have to do something. We can try our luck on the street, Clay suggested. We're just as likely to get run over as we are eaten. I'm not really a fan of either, Vivian countered. Moses pondered for a moment, his brow furrowing as if a troubling thought had just invaded his mind. What time is it? He abruptly inquired. Clay, caught off guard, echoed, what? What time is it? Moses repeated, his urgency apparent. Vivian glanced down at her watch. 1147. Why do you ask? because I know what to do, but we're going to have to lay low for a little bit," Moses explained cryptically. Where? Clay pressed. Moses peered around the corner once more, his gaze scanning the platform until it settled on a small information kiosk position between the survivors and the encroaching horde. The structure boasted a single door facing them, its sturdy walls and tall windows offering a semblance of protection. We get in there, Moses declared, conviction ringing in his voice. Both Clay and Vivian shook their heads in dissent. If we get in there, then we'd be trapped just like whoever is in the office, Clay protested. Just trust me, Moses insisted, his tone unwavering. This is the way. Both Clay and Vivian weighed their options, realizing that all other avenues would likely lead to their demise. With reluctant nods, they acquiesced to Moses' plan. As Moses guided them from their cover, they moved with deliberate caution. He gestured for them to align in a straight formation behind him, minimizing their exposure against the probing gazes of the undead lurking behind. Approaching within ten yards of the kiosk, a solitary ghoul shuffled into view, prompting Moses to signal for swift movement while striving to maintain their concealment. Their efforts were futile as the ghoul detected their presence emitting a guttural moan before lurching towards them. Reacting swiftly, Moses broke formation, charging towards the creature as Clay and Vivian made a dash for the safety of the kiosk. Planting his foot firmly, Moses delivered a powerful blow to the ghoul's face, sending it sprawling to the ground. Though staggered, the creature remained conscious, its broken nose bearing the brunt of the impact. Turning back to the awaiting couple, who had managed to pry open the kiosk door, Moses sprinted quickly towards them. With a final burst of energy, he reached the entrance just as Clay and Vivian pulled him inside, sealing off the encroaching horde before they could close in. They slammed the door shut and hastily locked it, mere moments before several creatures slammed against the glass, their grotesque forms pressing against the barrier. 
Moses gestured for Clay and Vivian to take a seat while he retrieved a chair from inside the kiosk, using it to elevate himself for a better view of the adjacent office. Through the windows, he spotted three individuals, visibly frightened and oblivious to his presence. With a resounding whistle that reverberated across the platform, Moses caught their attention. The trio inside waved in acknowledgement, prompting Moses to shout over the din. Hang tight. I'm going to need your help in a minute, he called out, receiving a thumbs up from one of the figures. Taking a seat alongside Clay and Vivian, Moses inquired about the time. 11.50, Vivian replied, her confusion evident. Clay chimed in. Why do you keep asking for the time? Because at two minutes after midnight, a train runs through this station, Moses explained. Fully automated, so unless the whole system has gone down, it'll be rolling through here right on time. Vivian's brow furrowed in puzzlement. What good is that going to do? Just trust me, Moses replied. Vivian nodded in understanding as Clay removed the brass knuckle, handing it back to Moses, who gestured for him to keep it. You hang on to that, I'm good, Moses assured them. Can I ask you something, Moses? Vivian asked. We certainly have the time. Have at it, Moses replied. Where did you learn to fight like that? Vivian inquired. In my youth, I was a boxer. Got pretty good at it, too. Won a bunch of amateur fights before turning pro, Moses revealed. Clay's eyes widened in surprise. You were a professional boxer? For a few years there. Even managed to land an undercard bout at the Garden, Moses confirmed. You fought at the Garden? That's incredible, Vivian exclaimed. Well, fought may be overselling it. I got my ass whooped good, knocked out in the first round. But I made it there. Moses chuckled, his laughter contagious as it spread to the others, albeit briefly interrupted by the relentless pounding on the glass by the ghouls outside. We appreciate you fighting for us tonight, Vivian said. You bought me dinner, seemed like the least I could do, and I'm going to do my best to get us all to safety, Moses assured them. With that, the trio settled in, drawing close together as they awaited the arrival of midnight. Chapter 4 Inside the cramped confines of the information kiosk, the trio of survivors found themselves besieged by relentless creatures pounding on the windows from outside. Vivian, her gaze repeatedly flicking to her wristwatch, turned to Moses. It's midnight, she announced. Best get this started then, Moses replied, rising from his seat and unfastening his canvas bag which he then passed to the couple. Guard that with your life, he instructed, receiving a solemn nod from Vivian as he ascended onto a chair and let out another piercing whistle. As the attention of those inside the small office fixated on him, he raised his voice. I need you to make as much noise as you possibly can. Yell, scream, smack your hands on the glass, whatever you need to do to draw these things over to you. Perceiving the confusion among the people inside, he persisted, his voice firm. Just trust me. If you do this, I might be able to get us out of here in one piece. With determined nods, the occupants complied, unleashing a cacophony of shouts and thuds against the glass. Seizing the distraction, Moses descended from the chair and crouched low, hoping to evade notice while the creatures were drawn towards the commotion. As he hunched down, most of the creatures veered away, but two remained positioned perilously close to the exit he needed to use. Well, that's a problem, Moses muttered. Can you wait for the next train? Vivian proposed. It's not for 22 minutes, and if more of those things come down. His voice trailed off, Vivian understanding the implication behind his words. When I bust out this door, you slam it shut, Moses instructed, and Clay nodded positioning himself accordingly. Moses took a deep breath, stealing himself, before gripping the doorknob tightly. With a sudden burst of energy, he lunged forward, simultaneously turning the knob and exerting as much force as he could muster. The door slammed into the two zombies lurking just behind it, sending them stumbling back a few feet, though they swiftly regained their footing. Moses relinquished the door, 
allowing Clay to swiftly close it, and then he wasted no time in launching himself towards the closest zombie, delivering a powerful shove that sent it colliding into its companion. Though they didn't topple over, the maneuver created a momentary gap between them. With his eyes fixed on a small ledge at head level on the opposite side of the tracks, Moses sprinted forward, his adrenaline-fueled momentum carrying him onward. As he ran, he unleashed a thunderous roar into the night. Come and get me, assholes. Moses sprinted towards the tracks, his fervent yells echoing through the platform. As he reached the edge, he propelled himself off the platform, landing with a jarring thud that sent him stumbling momentarily. In the distance, the sound of an approaching train grew louder, its light piercing through the darkness as it neared the station. With a sense of urgency, Moses pulled himself upright and hurried across the tracks towards the small ledge. Glancing over his shoulder, he saw the zombies on the platform giving chase. The uncoordinated creatures stumbled as they stepped off the platform, some crashing face first onto the tracks while others stumbled forward, struggling to maintain their balance. Seizing the opportunity, Moses leapt up, grasping onto the ledge and hauling himself up, just as the ghouls regained their footing and resumed their pursuit. Balancing precariously on the narrow ledge, scarcely a foot wide, Moses pressed his back against the wall, the zombies clawing and reaching up towards him, their bloodied fingers brushing against his worn boots. For agonizing moments, he stood there, peering down at the creatures amassed below him on the tracks. A wave of relief washed over him as he glanced back at the platform, confirming that all the zombies had taken his bait, drawn into following him. A moment later, the train's headlights pierced the darkness, illuminating the station as it hurtled forward at breakneck speed. He gazed downward, incredulous as the zombies showed no signs of fleeing from the oncoming train. Instead, they remained fixated on him. The train barreled through the creatures on the tracks, annihilating them in a gruesome spectacle of crimson carnage. Yet, those pressed against the station wall found no reprieve, as the train's proximity to the edge subjected them to the merciless force of its momentum. It scraped them along the brick surface, dragging their bodies past Moses in a ghastly display. Moses stood paralyzed, trapped mere feet from the train. Inside the car, he spotted several creatures that were drawn to the open doors. Reacting swiftly, Moses pounded on the glass, his shouts piercing the chaos, and succeeded in grabbing the attention of the creatures within. Yeah, I'm over here. Come and get me. Moses yelled. The zombies lurking within the subway car abruptly abandoned their plan to exit through the doors, instead surging toward him. He maintained the diversion until the doors sealed shut and the train resumed its journey. With a playful wave, he bid them farewell. See you later, fellas. Moses called out as the train vanished, leaving the station devoid of immediate threats. Surveying the grisly aftermath below, he beheld a macabre tableau of mangled bodies and severed limbs strewn across the platform. Some of the undead still twitched feebly, their shattered forms betraying their futile attempts to rise. Descending cautiously onto the tracks, Moses navigated the gruesome terrain. On reaching the other side, Vivian and Clay extended their hands, helping him up. Badass move, Clay remarked admiringly. Moses grinned. What can I say? I was inspired. As they stood together, a trio emerged from a nearby office, their faces etched with confusion and fear. Stepping forward, a young woman, no older than 20, spoke for the group. What in the world is going on? She asked, her voice trembling. Something bad, Clay replied solemnly. We're trying to find somewhere safe. But safe from what? Why are those people attacking us? The woman pressed. I don't know. And it doesn't matter why, Vivian interjected. All that matters is that they are. Moses glanced around urgently. Come on, we don't have much time. Clay turned to the newcomers. You three should come with us. The woman hesitated, conflicted about what to do. No, I'm going home to my mother. She must be terrified. It's far worse out there on the streets. You really should come with us, Clay insisted his voice tinged with urgency. One of the men stepped forward, seizing the woman and pulling her away from the group. Come on, 
let's get you home, he urged. Moses interjected urgently, his tone grave. You're going to die if you go up there. Ignoring their warnings, the trio walked away, refusing to heed their advice. Vivian moved to intervene, but Clay restrained her, his grip firm. Let them go. They're not going to listen. We need to take care of ourselves, Clay insisted, his voice tinged with resignation. Moses gestured for them to follow, and they complied, descending to the edge of the platform before hopping down onto the tracks and forging ahead. As they ventured onward, the sound of distant screams pierced the air. Turning back, they witnessed the young woman, who had rejected their offer now fleeing toward them, pursued by a horde of ravenous zombies. Come on, we have to move. It's just up here. Moses shouted, urgency lacing his words as they pressed onward. The three of them quickened their pace, their hearts pounding as they raced along the tracks. After covering another forty yards, they reached the door. Moses swiftly turned the knob, and it swung open effortlessly. He ushered them inside, lingering at the threshold with a firm grip on the door. Glancing back, Moses hoped to offer the young woman a chance to join them. But tragedy struck as she stumbled on the tracks, sprawling face first onto the unforgiving ground. Before she could rise, the horde descended upon her, her screams muffled underneath the dead flesh. With a heavy heart, Moses closed the door, sealing off the gruesome scene outside. The trio found themselves in a dimly lit hallway, shrouded in darkness. Clay illuminated the path with his cell phone flashlight, casting feeble light into the gloom. As Moses led the way, he guided them through the labyrinthine corridor, navigating twists and turns for what felt like an eternity. Eventually, they encountered a narrow passage to their right, barricaded by a sturdy metal gate secured with a chain and padlock. Damn it, it's locked up tight, Vivian cursed, frustration evident in her voice. Moses smirked as he delved into the canvas bag still slung over Clay's shoulder. After a brief search, he produced a key and inserted it into the lock, effortlessly opening the gate. When I found this place, I wanted to make sure I could keep it, so I skipped a meal and bought myself a lock, Moses explained with a hint of satisfaction. The young couple chuckled appreciatively as they stepped into the room, Moses securing the lock behind them. They traversed a narrow pathway before arriving at a small room, its abandoned appearance suggesting it had once served as a makeshift office, long forgotten over the decades. What is this place? Vivian inquired, surveying their surroundings with curiosity. Not sure, but pretty sure it hasn't been used in my lifetime. All I know is that it's out of the elements, and with a blanket, it's plenty warm, Moses replied, gesturing towards a corner where a stack of blankets lay. Though weathered and dingy, they offered a semblance of comfort in their current predicament. So what do we do now? Vivian pressed. We stay here as long as we can and hope that they're able to stop whatever this is, Moses declared. Moses gestured towards his bag, and Clay passed it over. With a zip, he revealed several bottles of water and prepackaged crackers and snacks. It's not the healthiest of diets, but this should get us through a few days. I have a few more over there, too. What's mine is yours. Just make sure we ration it, Moses advised. The young couple nodded gratefully as they all settled onto the floor, Vivian finding solace in Clay's embrace. We can't thank you enough, Moses, Vivian expressed, her voice filled with gratitude. What are friends for, right? Moses replied warmly, his gaze reflecting a sense of camaraderie. Turning to his pile of blankets, Moses selected the cleanest one and draped it over the couple, ensuring their comfort. Let's get settled in. We're safe down here, he reassured them, a note of determination in his voice. As they nestled into their makeshift refuge, the distant sounds of moaning and banging echoed down the pathway. Though safe for the moment, they knew that eventually, they would have to confront the horror outside. The End